Hello everyone, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to be with you today and to tell you a little bit more about the Canadian Nurses Foundation. My name is Christine Reek Buckley, and I am the CEO. The CNF was created in 1962, as you can see here by a committee comprised of nine women who envisioned a much larger role for nurses in our healthcare system. In fact, it was really the vision of a very, very smart woman called Dr. Helen Musalem. She really had a vision that nurses needed support to advance their education and for nursing research. Dr. Helen Kathleen Musalem was a noted decorated Canadian nurse who served in the Royal Canadian Army Medical Corps during World War II. And really, this was an amazing woman. I had the, had the privilege to meet her. She had lots of medals. She really was very decorated. And she was a visionary from inside and out. And you can see here that the vision and mission really speak to her and what she had envisioned for the foundation. So it was all about excellence in nursing care. How do we advance nursing knowledge and improve health care? And it's by providing scholarships, awards, and research grants to nurses and nursing students across our nation. So I'll tell you a little bit more about how we actually support nurses at the foundation. Scholarships are at all academic levels, baccalaureate, master's, and PhD. And we have just established two new LPN scholarships. We have been providing Indigenous scholarships since 2009. Close to 200 Indigenous nurses and nursing students have been supported to advance their education. We award about a quarter of a million dollars or more every year. And just so that you know, our applications just opened last week and will be open till the middle of February. Also very active in supporting young and up and coming researchers. The foundation currently supports indigenous researchers who are looking at dementia care for indigenous populations, as well as supporting indigenous nursing research chairs, which were just newly established in 2019 and CNF is able to support five of these research chairs. We also have a partnership with the Sigma Theta Tau International Organization to support a nurse engaging in a project or research that touches on a broad range of nursing practice issues. And that research support totals about fifty to $75,000 a year. We are also supporting some initiatives with our new COVID-19 fund which I will be speaking to you about in a little while. CNF also prides itself in supporting nurses who validate their clinical specialty knowledge through CNA certification. And that's about ten to $15,000 a year. Those awards are currently open and they will be open till December 31st and awards will be granted in early 2021. I also want to tell you a little bit about our Foresight is 2020 campaign. Last year, CNF wanted to do something to honor the International Year of the Nurse and Midwife and the anniversary of Florence Nightingale's 200th birthday. But we also want to acknowledge that we were moving into a new decade. So we established Foresight is 2020, 20 big ideas to shape the future of Canadian healthcare. We felt it was critical to highlight some of the main challenges that our healthcare system and society will face and nursing's essential role. So we came up with 20 timely relevant health challenges. You can see a few of them listed here. As I said, there are 20 and I won't go on about all of them, but I thought I might highlight a few for you today. Climate change is one area where we think that nurses will have a very important role and climate change is a very relevant issue to the public. 
Nurses caring for patients right now impacted by diseases that are a result of climate change. And they have an important role in education and public advocacy. Another area is the area of cannabis. So there's still so much we don't know about cannabis, the impact on health, etc. Nurses need to be aware of those issues and help educate patients and the public. And they have a huge health promotion and disease prevention role. Another one of our 20 big ideas is immunization. Nurses are the primary administers of vaccines, placing them in a crucial position to promote immunization. They can advocate for its importance and efficacy. And really, timing has never been more critical, hasn't it? Given what the world is facing and living through right now, the role of nurses will play such a big component of the vaccine implementation once it's developed and distributed. So I've just recently heard um, one of the vaccine producers highlighting this as well, how important they see the role of nurses as this vaccine hits the market. I also want to tell you about our COVID-19 fund, which was launched in April of this year. We all know that we're living in a very, very unprecedented time. I think a time that none of us even imagined and we are really being faced with one of the world's biggest health challenges. When the pandemic hit, I think the public, public started realizing and seeing the important role that nurses play. And you know, I've been at the foundation for eight years. I've been working tirelessly too, trying to increase awareness of the foundation and the essential role nurses play in our health each and every day. Well, to tell you the truth, the pandemic did it for me. No, I don't think there's been any time where the public hasn't been so aware of the role that nurses are playing for all of them in keeping us um, healthy and keeping us safe and risking their own lives to do that. So the public came to us, many different people came to us, private and, and public, and they wanted to help nurses. So we developed the CNF COVID fund for nurses with initial sponsorship funding from Johnson & Johnson as seen here, a founding donor and our founding sponsor Tylenol. And we've brought on more than a dozen diverse partners, including suppliers of PPE and most recently one that I'll tell you a little more about. Um, they are a company in Toronto and they um, do marketing and branding and they wanted to give back to nurses. And so they contacted us and said, look, remember back when, when everybody was out on the street clanging pots and pans and cheering nurses on? Well, they recorded it. They wanted to be able to um, have people remember what that sounded like. So they created a track called Claps That Count. And what that does, it's a recording in Toronto and it's very powerful. I've listened to it myself and there's like quiet, quiet, quiet. And all of a sudden you can hear an increase of the cheering and the clapping. And what they've done is they have um, made an agreement with with Spotify and with Apple Music, and they have this recording, Claps That Count, um, loaded onto those sites, and people are encouraged to stream this Claps That Count, and for every stream, some of the royalties, well, actually all of the royalties, go to the Canadian Nurses Foundation. So if I leave you with anything today, please go and stream Claps That Count on Spotify or Apple Music. You don't need a count, an account. You just need to put that in there and stream it. And we're trying to see if we can get everybody everywhere to stream Claps That Count. And of course, last but not least, the COVID-19 Fund is helping us fund this very exciting initiative 
uh, nursing the future, but I'll get into that in a bit more detail in a moment. So the COVID-19 fund for nurses really was intended um, to help nurses today, to support nurses at the front line. And what are the kind of things that nurses are dealing with during this pandemic? Well, we've heard lots about mental health and how nurses are struggling. I mean, it's very hard for us to imagine these nurses, and some of you might be doing this as well in clinical or in your, in your new working roles where you go to work and you have to come home and you're not sure whether you're putting your family, your friends at risk, your colleagues. So I think that is extremely stressful. I think this pandemic has really pushed um, the resiliency, resiliency level of nurses on the front line. So I think mental health is really a critical area that we need to look at. We also want to ensure that the fund is there to help nurses with evidence, skills and training they need to better navigate COVID-19. Are there different elements that, I mean, we're still learning about this pandemic, right? Each and every one of us, the healthcare team, but nurses need to be part of the solution. They are there 24 seven. They need to be telling and working with and collaborating with um, the rest of the healthcare team to tell and share what they've experienced and how they think they could things could be better. We also want to ensure that in that process, we're developing and sharing best practices because we've heard on numerous occasions now that this isn't going to be the last pandemic. And were we really ready this time? I'm not so sure, but hopefully we'll be better prepared moving forward. And we also want to help with exploring and supporting new research in critical care and pandemic response. So these are some of our community uh, partnerships. They're very diverse, as I said. You know, we have one called Honeybee who gives us a portion of their honey sales. And I think they have um, like vitamin C and different kinds of health products um, that have honey in them. And so part of their sales goes to um, the foundation. Mud here, you see here, and they've decided to um, give us a portion of their registration. I think it's $25 per registration. Of course, they haven't been able to run their um, circuits this year, uh, but some of you may have participated in them in the past, and they are willing to um, continue this partnership when they can be up and running again. Um, Pandora, I'm sure many of you have heard about. Um, I've talked about the um, partnership with the, um, I don't see it here, Med Supplier, which is the one that, oh, it's Skyscreen actually. And they're the ones who are providing um, a small portion of their, of, their, of their sales of masks and gloves to the foundation. Um, so it's really quite amazing to look at what people have done and how they wanted to help out in this pandemic, realizing the importance that nurses are playing. And so I've talked a little bit about um, that we wanted to fund different kinds of projects, but I'll share with you um, some of the ones that we're focusing on right now. Um, one of them is about advanced practice nurses, so clinical nurse specialists, nurse practitioners around the globe, and how their role has been impacted and changed as part of the pandemic globally. We also have a project initiative that, well, it's actually research, that is looking at nurses' skin, the complications they are experiencing by wearing a facial mask for eight to 12 hours or often longer during their nursing shifts. And so a lot of them are having skin breakdown. So this is looking at, you know, what does that look like? How can we prevent it? What products could they use? So that's an, another one that's really important and relevant. And then also um, we're hoping to fund an investigative series on the pandemic and its impact on long-term care and what needs to change. And I'm sure many of you have heard about the horrific stories of long-term care and the lack of funding, but also not just funding, it's also about care standards and why um, nursing homes and some long-term care homes 
were so at risk during this pandemic um, when it hit. And I'm not sure that it's improved since the first wave as we are now embarking on the second wave. And of course, we're funding Nursing the Future. And I love this quote by your leader, Dr. Judy. Uh, we have an opportunity to wrap our arms around our newest practitioners during one of the most challenging times in our contemporary healthcare history. I think it's difficult enough to transition from student into the profession and the workforce, but now throw the pandemic into the mix too. And oh my God, how challenging is that? You know, I remember when I first entered the profession and it was hard, it was tough. You really felt, sometimes you felt that people were judging you or, you know, you questioned yourself a lot of the time because you thought, I'm pretty sure I'm right here, but maybe you weren't doing things exactly the same way as people on that unit were doing something. And so you questioned yourself, even though you were really quite sure that what you were doing and the practice you were following was the most uh, recent and based on evidence. So it's really, it's really challenging. And so, you know, hats off to all of you um, for moving forward into the profession and having this network um, that we, you know, we are able to help support through Dr. Judy and her team and this network of support, this network of mentorship and learning for all of you at a time where, as I said, it's never been more critical and more important. So I really do wish you all the best as you embark on your careers. And I hope that you all find this initiative, Nursing the Future, to meet some of those challenges and help you feel more confident and happy and satisfied um, as you continue to take care of clients and patients and really, really um, relish in this wonderful profession that you have joined. That's all I have to say today. I hope that you will reach out to me if you have any questions. I'm more than happy to speak to some of you. You can send me an email. Dr. Judy will support you and provide you with my email address, or you can send something to info at cnf-fiac.ca. Um, I encourage you to visit our website to look at Foresight is 2020. And I also encourage you, which I didn't talk about today, um, to go and have a look at our website about the gala that is happening on December 3rd. We have a special rate for students. So I don't know if some of you are still students or if all of you are practicing, but I would encourage you to try and attend on December 3rd. It's going to be an evening to thank nurses. We have lots of things planned and I think it will be a night to remember and not miss. Wishing you all the best. Thank you again for allowing me to speak with you today and congratulations on picking such an amazing profession.